That's a look at your headlines. Ainsley. Okay, thank you so much. A new poll revealing Democrats' advantage in the midterm election is shrinking since the beginning of the year. One lawmaker has an idea why. There's been, in the last couple of years, everything on the left especially has shifted toward identity politics. The, the Democrats used to care, and they gave the same talking points, Bill Clinton, Schumer, Pelosi, middle class, blue collar worker. They used to care about that wage rate for the average person. They've given up on that, and they're losing elections. And so I don't think this new identity politics passes, but the hard left is messaging hard on those issues. And so we'll see. I, I don't think it's a winning message for them. Well, is he right? Here to debate is RNC spokesperson Kaylee McEnany and Fox News contributor Jessica Tarlov. Jessica, as the Democrat, I'll start with you. Is he right? Is Congressman Bratt right saying that the left has become more about identity politics and that's why they're losing elections? I think there is some truth to it. We've been discussing this a lot since the 2016 election and, and the adverse effect that adverse, sorry, uh, effect that identity politics has had on elections. But if you look at what is going around in the country for Democrats, we are actually winning elections. You look at Connor Lamb, who ran exactly opposite to that kind of methodology. And I feel like Congressman Bratt's argument ignores the fact that the right also uses identi identity politics. They're just only catering to one constituency, which is white Americans and specifically Christians. Kaylee, what's your response to that? Yeah, that, that's not true at all. You know, here's where the Republicans get it right. Our message is always about a common destiny. It's what Ronald Reagan's message is. It's what President Trump's message is. This idea that all Americans should have access to the American dream. We don't groupify individuals into groups. We don't balkanize society. And liberals who are smart enough to realize that this is going wrong are saying things that Republicans have critiqued the Democratic Party for for decades. You know, Mark Lilo wrote in the New York Times, that American liberalism has sunk into this moral panic about gender identity and race. And he wrote a really smart critique of the Democratic Party, saying every time Hillary was on the campaign trail, she'd make specific calls to certain groups. But she com completely missed one group, the one David Bratt referred to, the white working class who's lived in generational poverty but has been ignored by the new modern left. But you just admitted it there, that that's what's going on here, that the Republican Party is catering to the white working class. No, I didn't class. admit that. Yes, you cater to all you Americans. It. No, no, you no, don't cater to say that. I said that. I said I said Hillary Clinton named certain groups, and in doing so, she missed an important group: whites who have lived in generational poverty. Your Republicans, base. Republicans, by contrast, we don't put people in groups. We That's, say every American should have access to the American dream. It's oh, at the core of our party. Well, we agree with that about on that fundamentally with one another, but that's not at all how this has worked out. If you've listened to President Trump, look at the NFL protests. When he called people uh, black athletes SOBs, who was he catering to there? When he talks about Judge Curiel, that he can't reside over a Trump case because of his Mexican heritage, what's going on there? The language of a Muslim ban, what's going on there? There's a reason that his support amongst people who say that they're white identity is extremely important to them, reached 81% support for President Trump. And look how he's polling with minority groups. Now, I'm not saying that we need to run out there and only cater to specific groups in those ways, and I want an economic message, but to deny the fact that Republicans cater specifically to white groups and then Christians, look at the war on Christmas. Totally ridiculous. President Obama was a big fan of the holiday, and President right. Trump makes it as if you haven't had a holiday in decades. Kaylee, real Je quickly, last comment. Sure, Jessica, what you're doing is playing identity politics right now. No. You make President Trump's policies about race. By the way, I'd point out he won more African Americans, more Hispanic voters than Mitt Romney did. And it's because Mitt the Romney has a problem marginalizes too. and says Hispanics will never vote for him because of immigration when in fact he won a third of Hispanic voters. Because women like that Cuban business owner that you guys just had on, she cares about the economy. But let the left sums up these groups and marginalize them, marginalizes the president's policies. If All you right. look at his approval rating with those groups, it tells a very different story. He did do better than Mitt Romney, but I can't really defend that as to say I don't think Mitt Romney was particularly catering or going out there in search of the minority vote in the way that he should have. I agree with an economic message that lifts everyone up, but if you look at the rhetoric that comes out of the right, even about entitlements, who the makers and the takers, who are the makers? Those are white men, corporate boards, the people who got that big tax cut, and the takers, it's always implied that it's minorities who are feeding President off Trump of the system. 40% of Trump SNAP. Trump never talked Kaylee. in those terms. Well, Jessica, you thanks should talk so to your party. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll see y'all next week. All right, President Trump welcomes Japan's Prime Minister to Florida in just a few hours. What can we expect from their meeting? National Economic Council Director Larry Kudlow is here with a preview. That's next. Plus, the video is incredible a plane skidding across a busy road, coming within.